As a nurse for over 30 years, I have seen firsthand the damage and the loss families can experience from bullying. The emerging world of cyberbullying is taking a toll on our students in ways we couldn't even imagine just a few years ago. Traditional acts of bullying extend beyond the halls of our school buildings and have found a new home on the internet. Through this hearing, we will explore areas of concern related to cyberbullying and how it is compounded by traditional forms of bullying. While the overwhelming number of uh, our students are safe, it is a parent's worst nightmare to learn that their child has become a victim of crime or other incident. Acts of bullying can quickly escalate into cyberbullying, which as we know is far reaching and can lead to outbreaks of violence. According to a February 2010 Pew report, 73%, 73% of wired American teens now use social networking websites, a significant increase from previous surveys. Another recent Pew report found that daily text messaging among American teens has shot up in the past year and a half, 38% in February of 2008, to 54% in September 2009. It's not just frequency. Teens are sending enormous quantities of text messaging every single day. Half of our teens send 50 or more texts, text messaging a day, and one in three send more than 100 text messaging a day. As a parent, knowing that your child has been the victim of any form of bullying can be heartbreaking. So too can learning that your child is a bully. These days, cyberbullying can have dire consequences. The emotional and physical impacts of cyberbullying have become more severe than ever, and we need to be proactive in dealing with this serious problem. Students cannot learn and teachers cannot teach in environments that are unsafe and frightening. Students ought to be able to focus on learning and gaining the tools they need to succeed in life, not worrying about physical or emotional violence. Another theme that I think is important that you'll hear running throughout this hearing is the effective cyber safety efforts must include coordination between all interested parties, especially the students. The students know what's happening to them and to their peers, and often way before adults do. They are critical partners in any cyber safety efforts, and I look forward to hearing ideas on this. Student cyber safety is necessary for success successful academic career. We cannot legislate morality, nor insist on kindness, and we cannot criminalize meaningless. Awareness and education hold the key to any solution. As the committee continues our work on reauthorizing the Elementary and Secondary Education Act, we must give serious consideration to, to the testimony before us today and determine how Congress can best move forward to prevent further tragedies.